Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to add arrow bars to your graph. I'm using Logger Pro 3.16 on a Mac. I have here a graph from some data from a previous video. It was about Ohm's law and you can see I have current versus voltage. The current being my dependent variable and on the x-axis voltage is my independent variable. Usually we only put error bars on our dependent variable, in this case current. Usually our error would be plus or minus half of the smallest measurement. So in this case would be 0 0.05 because the smallest thing I can measure is 0.1. Now that's going to make a really small error for my graph. So just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to say let's make it plus or minus 2 so that you can be able to see my error bars. Well, how would I put that on my graph? I'm going to double click on current. Don't worry about those other ones for now. And where it says options, I have this error bar calculation. And so if I used a fixed value here, I could say my error was plus or minus, I said I would use the value of 2. And there you can see them on the, on the graph. Now, more than likely though, that's not the case, especially if you do IB physics. That's what those other columns are for. Because what happens is usually we actually don't do it once. We do our trials three times. So let's say here's the new data for my graph. I've for each of these voltages, I tested the current three separate times. And what I should do then is calculate my average. Now, if I want to get an error from here, we're going to use the range by two method because there's probably reasons that I have variation beyond just what I can read on my ammeter when I read the current. You can see in the first one, my lowest value here was 17.6, but it was actually as high as 20.2. So there are probably other things about my apparatus or how I took my measurements that are causing errors beyond my actual measurement tool. So how do we come up with an error? What we do is we do the range, which is the highest value minus the lowest value, and we divide the, that by 2. And we'll use that as our plus or minus or our uncertainty. That's what I've done for each of these. Remember, each time I want to do these columns, in this case current, I got Logger Pro to calculate it for me. So what did I do? I went data, calculated column, and then I said add the three columns together. If I look at column definition here current, current trial 2, current trial 3, add them together, divide by 3 to get my average current. For this one, I went data, new manual column, and then I calculated those myself. So for each of these, I took the maximum value minus the minimum value and divided that by 2, and I put that into this column here. So this is very typical for IB the kind of data I would get. For each of my independent variable, I've done three different trials and measured my dependent variable. So what actually should be graphed here? Well, I actually shouldn't graph all three trials. What I should only graph here is my average current. And now I have an error differing every single time. So if I uh, double click on here, if I go to options, you can see I've actually kept this already. It's a fixed value, and I have here use column my calculated error. Now, you would have heard me say before, these are like pieces of paper. We can move them in and out. Also, if you think you've lost something, it's probably just because the piece of paper has gone to the back. So if I click on the graph here, I can make it bigger. Okay, so there's my graph. You can see that my error bars are not all the same size. That's because if you look at my calculated column, because of the variation in my data, 
I can see that some of them have more error than others or more uncertainty than others. So what does this mean for a graph? Well, if I selected my data, go Analyze, and I go down here to Curve Fit. Remember, we want y equals mx plus b. We do not want a fourth through 0, 0. Go Try Fit. Yep, that looks like the line. OK. It does look like a straight line, so I should have a straight line here. Now, what about those error bars? Well, what it can do is it can actually help me calculate how much error is in my slope. What really could be the most positive gradient in within those error bars? And what is the minimum? So I'm going to do the same thing. So I've selected all of my data here. Analyze. Curve fit. But in this case, let me hit try fit. Let me go manual. OK. So here, right now, it's right on top of it because I haven't done any adjustment. If I double click here, a couple of really important things. First, let me choose a new color so that it will stand out and I don't get it confused. And one really important thing here, this button, Enable Line Drag. OK. So now what I have here, do you see I've got three triangles? What they'll allow me to do is actually move this line of best fit. So first of all, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to do the maximum line of best fit that I could draw through these error bars and still make it through the error bar. So it's possible. Now, in previous syllabus, they said just look at the first and last points and their error bars. So see how I've just touched the bottom of the error bar right here? And up here, I'm going to move this so I just hit the top of it. Now, what's really important is that we look at the lines and say, does this still make sense? Now, if you take a look, I'm nowhere near this error bar or here. So perhaps this line is actually just a little bit too low. And that would be a better line the best fit. See how I'm close to this one? Even better is if I had been touching it. I am now touching this one. And so that's a better, more realistic, more in trend with our point. Now, I've done the bottom here. And I've hit the top error bar here. That means I've got a greater a steeper gradient. 8.82, 18, sorry, 18.82, 18.25. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing, but now we want to do the minimum gradient. So curve fit, try fit, go to manual. Okay. I'm going to just click on this and drag it out of the way. Double click on it, change my appearance to make it stand out. Let's make a nice green color this time. Enable line drag. And so if I want the minimum line of best fit now. I'm going to take it. Oh, you can see I just got the red there by accident. Oh, I still have the red. Let's move that one out of the way for now. Here we go. I'm going to now, for the minimum line of best fit, I want to go to the bottom of this error bar and to the top down here. Again, I'm just going to move this red one out of the line, out of the way right now. And I'll move my red ones back. Now you can see that through my line, the black one was the one that the computer gave to me. My red one 
was using my error bars, I looked to see what was the greatest gradient that I could get using the top of the error bars here, the bottom of the error bar here, still making sure it made sense within my data to get a gradient of 18.81. Whereas for the green line, I used the top of the error bar here, the bottom of the error bar here, still double checking that it made sense within the error bar. I've got a gradient of 17.81, which means that looking at my graph, my gradient of 18.25, remember, it only has four significant figures because I've told it to have four. It actually is probably 18.25, as great as 18.81, as low as 18.81. And again, I'd use my range divided by two. In this case, very lucky, my range is one, divided by two is 0.5. I should only have one significant figure in my uncertainty. So that in this case would be 0.5. So, I'm going to insert a text box. And that means for this particular line, I would say that my gradient is 18.3 plus or minus 0.5. Notice that my gradient has to be rounded to match my uncertainty. Hopefully that will help you then be able to add error bars to your graph, create maximum and minimum lines of best fit, and calculate a gradient with its uncertainty.